when I think about the zero waste in a business, uh, my first, one of my first uh, uh, thinking uh, in my mind, it's Philip, uh, because actually Philip uh, is working on uh, in soup shocket. It's yes. a good pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Philip it has the idea that it's really changing the world, not only Sweden, I think, because it's really inspirational, to create the first frozen uh, food in uh, Sweden, catering. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it will be kind of a tips uh, today with a 10 guidelines from the Zero Waste, uh, Great Taste Zero Waste Manifesto from us, but mostly Philip will be one of the real proofs that it can happen in practice. And how to top this introduction uh, with uh, Kasia? Well, it's easy because Kasia is even as great or if not greater than me. Uh, yeah. Kasia <laughs> is the founder of Rebread. And uh, what uh, Rebread uh, is uh, doing is many things, rethinking and giving new life to uh, old uh, bread. Uh, one thing that you do is new sourdough bread made on 30% rescued bread from the last batch, but also another, uh, all, a lot of other innovative products like uh, new protein sources from this uh, old bread to make uh, alternatives for squid. And uh, I also got to try in your breakfast place in Krakow uh, some months ago some uh, gin uh, off duty. Uh, based on uh, rescued bread, which was also really interesting. So, uh, yeah, thank a you. lot of uh, cool things from uh, yeah. Kasia. Thank you, thank you, Philip. Uh, for us, uh, it was a challenge to introduce ourselves in a different way. But actually, you know, uh, what we want to have as a key message today, that waste, we want to somehow reframe the waste in your mind that the great taste can be from zero waste, yeah? So we want to pr uh, actually present the 10 guidelines from the Zero Waste Manifesto, so the meat of all of this content uh, that you can find on the website. And we want to create a kind of a proofs that it can really happen in a practice. So let's go with that. Uh, there are 10 guidelines, actually, and we are starting. We're starting, yes. We will be uh, talking through all the guidelines one by one. By one. And this is the first thing that you find when you go into the website, all these guidelines. They are general, uh, and then if you scroll down a bit further, you can find specific, more in-depth guidelines for every specific uh, branch of the professional kitchen. So we have hotels, restaurants, catering. So whichever uh, industry you're working in as a professional uh, uh, kitchen uh, uh, person, you can uh, type that and you will get tailor-made guidelines just for uh, your industry. Um, first guideline is to plan efficient. All these guidelines are to help you reduce your food waste in the kitchen. Plan efficient is maybe the most important uh, guideline for reducing food waste. And uh, it, planning is very uh, broad. Uh, it is everything before you cook. Uh, uh, until after you have served uh, the food to the customers. We have some uh, tools actually also in this website that is free for all of you to download. Uh, two uh, free Excel documents uh, that you find under the... Uh, here, exactly. So uh, the, the, the Excel document, uh, Great Taste Zero Waste Planning Sheet, if you click on that one, you can download it and uh, for free uh, tailor make your own different products that you serve as a catering company or a restaurant. Uh, break them down into different uh, sequence and items, like a wrap maybe has a salad or roasted veggies and stuff like that. And once you have tailor made your different products, uh, you have your Excel document perfect for your uh, kitchen. Then you can just type in the amount of guests for uh, an order uh, on a weekly basis or monthly, and this Excel document will give you an automatic calculation of how much you need to produce, how much you need to buy, and uh, everything like that, so that you don't buy too much, and that you don't cook too much for your customers. 
make sure to update this frequently until you feel that you have really had a, developed a good Excel document. So this is a live Excel document for every time you change your recipes or uh, every time you serve a catering, you see how much is coming back from the catering event. Um, so hopefully this can be a useful tool for your planning uh, in the kitchen. Another uh, thing if we go back to uh, the general guidelines um, about planning is what to do with the leftovers. Because a big part of these 26% of total food waste that uh, we as Horeca uh, industry uh, stands for is from the leftovers after events, uh, if it's a catering company or after uh, lunch or dinner as a restaurant. What to do with these leftovers? Well, have a plan for that before uh, you even have the event, maybe one or two weeks before. Uh, maybe there is a shelter, a church, or any other uh, organization in your local city that uh, already has a system of donating meals. Like my catering company in Stockholm, we have uh, eight uh, organizations that we collaborate with. So if we have an event that is for more than 100 guests, we know that there will be leftovers most likely afterwards. So we give a call to one of the organizations one week before to make them ready uh, so that you're prepared. More information in depth about all this if you click on your different uh, tailor-made uh, industries uh, for sure. Then measuring and analyzing your food waste is also uh, essential for knowing if you have any food waste or not. Uh, otherwise, it can easily be that if you throw something, it's, um, it's um, gone and uh, you don't see it, you don't feel it or understand it. So start measuring your food waste is a good uh, start for also making your whole kitchen crew aware. We have another Excel uh, tool about measuring that Jakob in our, in our uh, uh, group uh, of developers uh, uh, developed that you also find under tools. Yeah, and actually, there, uh, we can make a sneak peek because today will be also an online presentation from Orbisk that it's actually measuring and analyzing and it's more like a technology that we can use uh, in a bigger places in Horeca. So this is like a second, uh, second uh, guideline, but let's go farther, the farther, but actually something which is connected already with the things that uh, Philip mentioned about planning, it's uh, designing a smart menu. Smart, how to be smart actually, because it's not only about choosing the right ingredients, but it's also about actually uh, thinking about whole system. So if you think, uh, think holistically about designing a menu, uh, imagine that you can lower the efficiency, like the, the amount of the power used for creating the perfect oatmeal. How to do this? Uh, in a restaurant, uh, you are using the coffee machines, of course, because everyone needs coffee. So if coffee, it's like, it's, if water is boiling constantly during the day, uh, why not to use the boiled water to other things? Like, for example, everyone knows the overnight oatmeal, uh, overnight oats. So why do we uh, not think sometimes about the processes that we can create an overnight oatmeal that can be like lower 20% because this is actually the number that uh, was lowered uh, in the breakfast restaurant about the number amount of the power overnight so boiled water used for overnight oatmeal and then creating a milk from the nuts that are actually remaining from uh, uh, for example uh, baking cookies uh, so if you think in a way that the smart menu, it's not only using the resources and the ingredients that you have, but also thinking about the processes that you use to this in the kitchen and leftovers that you plan from the very beginning, not that leftovers are already and you are thinking about the magic wand, what to do with them, yeah? So from the very beginning, be smart. So this is like a practical example of the guideline. 
And of course, it's kind of connected with the fourth one, which is serve reasonable portions. I think it's actually kind of clear what it's all about, reasonable portions, but it's also about measuring and knowing your customers, uh, which amount of exactly part of the money it's exactly eaten. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more thing about the uh, design a smart menu uh, also is to try to leave some flexibility uh, when you talk to a customer or present it in a restaurant. Uh, just a slight mention that there can be some slight variation to this depending on what we have bought in season or rescued uh, earlier on the, the week. So you have the freedom to make last minute uh, changes. Yeah. Okay, we go to uh, fifth one. Fifth one. Uh, order responsibly. Uh, I would say that's also connected to uh, planning. So uh, if you know how much you uh, have to order from the Excel documents uh, in uh, uh, the first step, uh, you don't buy too much. And also uh, you could uh, try to find the things that are in season. It's also often uh, cheaper, which is nice during these times in uh, uh, increased uh, costs of products. Uh, practice good uh, storage routines. So uh, one thing important to mention here is the FIFO rule. Um, FIFO rule. Uh, maybe uh, most of you have heard about it uh, already, which means uh, first in, first out. Uh, label the things that you store so you know uh, what has been there longest and it doesn't become old before you have uh, used it, basically. Other things uh, that could be mentioned, how we work in uh, Stockholm, we freeze a lot, but that's because we rescue from supermarkets and have really short lifespan. But it has, it has actually given us a lot of other positive things, like, um, for example, if you buy in season, you could buy much more than what you need and maybe par parboil, vacuum pack and freeze for later, reduce costs, be more sustainable and uh, store more in the freezer. A bit more electricity the costs, unfortunately, but uh, it could be also a good way to reduce uh, food waste. And I can build on that uh, about the bread. Uh, when you find out, and we in Rebret we just find out <laughs> uh, exact uh, temperature for the drying uh, stale bread, you can actually preserve it from being spoiled and uh, from being like a waste. And you can then use this dried bread in absolutely amazing uh, ideas so i will make like for you the hunger to go to rebred page and see what we are doing but this is also about the temperature of the processes that you are storing okay so let's go to the seventh and eighth which are actually connected with each other it's uh, building a, a zero waste culture in the kitchen uh, this is something which is actually really personalized into the environment that you are working in. So there is no one tool uh, or rule that you can use because it's about people. So if you know your people and their awareness of the zero waste, what is zero waste for them and what is food waste for them. Paula was like trying to make a description today, definition of the food waste. But if you are asking people about the zero waste or food waste routines in their homes, there is different level of like you know uh, awareness about this. So it's it needs to be personalized the environment to the team, but it can be connected with uh, the whole system, the whole ecosystem around the restaurant or the hotel. So going beyond the kitchen, it's important. It's not only about the food itself and the kitchen. It's about like community around this, about other partners about other companies in the region, about farmers in the region, and everyone who actually can create a change in making it less waste. So I don't know if you know, maybe you know here, uh, the game uh, The Sims. You remember this game? <laughs> actually, it was like you have some uh, a set of resources that you can use to build your home or to maintain some, some kind of a community. So. If you think about your environment in a way that you know the resources that are in the region and you think that it's not about creating your, for example, your own beverages or your own food or meals yourself only, but with other partners, like creating a hubs 
it can be like in, in a circular way. So collaborations. This is something that can be better in fighting the zero waste, like a food waste. So this is like the eighth uh, tip. Uh, and we have the two last ones, actually. Uh, the, the last uh, two, two tips are communicate and mind the taste. So uh, to start with communicating, it's uh, also very important uh, because uh, sadly, if you do a lot of good stuff, but you don't tell people that you do it in today's society with the social media and stuff, uh, for the value of your company, uh, to your customers, it doesn't matter what you do. Of course, it matters to the planet, but uh, it, it, what people do, doesn't know doesn't really matter uh, in a commercial sense. And actually, let's face it, we are in a climate crisis, and if you start working more sustainable, you will get a lot of positive values for your company, maybe increased customer base as well, if you communicate it. Mm -hmm. So. Communicating can lead to uh, increased sales and better economical situation for your company. Also working with re reducing food waste um, often needs that you collaborate uh, among, uh, outside of your own company. S because uh, maybe the suppliers that you uh, buy things from has things that they are throwing away all the time. And if you communicate what you are doing, they will know about it and then they know who to call when they have something that they're going to throw away. Which has been the sense in uh, our operations, where I have run Soup Circuit for eight years in Stockholm. It started out with almost no collaborations, but then uh, uh, constantly uh, posting something on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, now we collaborate with uh, 30 companies, uh, amongst half of them are uh, uh, food waste collaborators. And it's thanks to us communicating what we do. Companies hearing about it, knowing that we do it, and maybe they think that we do it even more than what we do. So uh, they uh, will uh, contact us, and then gradually we are doing it more and more. And it's also the same with uh, colleagues in the company, that they will also get more and more on board. And, and just before yes, this, yes, I will definitely. make like a, a shift. So. Uh, if I can ask you a final question, what is what was most surprised when it comes to you know the circular food uh, recipe from the wasted uh, ingredients? What what was most surprised for you when it comes to taste? That you thought that okay, this is the waste uh, food, but actually it's super it's super nice in the taste. Yes. So, uh, leading question, but that was the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the surprise and, uh, that they can uh, taste Definitely. Well. So, uh, uh, when we, because we rescue things uh, even before we start cooking it from supermarkets, uh, one ton every week that would have been thrown away otherwise from two supermarkets in Stockholm. Uh, and uh, uh, what we can see is that a lot of things that we rescue that they would throw away is actually tastier than if you buy it uh, new in the supermarket. For example, uh, meat that has been vacuum packed and uh, been for many weeks in the supermarket, uh, that's the nicest meat because it is uh, mature and very tender uh, if it has been in a vacuum seal. And uh, there is many examples like, like this, definitely. Yeah. That, that's why I wanted to ask that this, the last thing, mind the taste, it's about t uh, waste can be even better mm. in a taste, yeah? And uh, I think this is the last thing and to make a dot on yes. <laughs> and I to finalize. I was going to say it can yeah. be worse as well, but, uh, but uh, it, it can for sure be better also. But just mind it. Mind at it. bed stage. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you.